What's going on everybody out there? This is Nick from House of Paint 203, bringing you the second part of the Iron Golem project. And the first part we base coated using Gunmetal Gray from Vallejo Game Colors. Actually, it was not Vallejo Game Colors, excuse me. It was just, um, just from Vallejo Model Color. So it's more of their like Civil War, World War II line. And that's what we used to base coat the entire figure except for the ground that he's standing on because we're going to do that in a different color and now in this phase we are going to give it a black wash Actually, i'm using shadow wash from the army painter and again we're going to look to cover the whole model with this wash focusing specifically on the crevices the divots the recesses of this armor because again this guy is a tank so wherever shadow would pull that's where we are going to focus our wash. So let's get going. All right, so I have some of my black wash in the palette. I have a little bit of water on the tip of my brush. I don't want to go too crazy with it. At least at first. Let's start on the back here. So I want to focus in on where the armor kind of overlaps for sure. Make sure that it creates a nice little kind of shadow. Looks pretty good. I'm happy with it. Now we're going to be dry brushing the entire figure with uh, silver, which is going to be obviously a lighter metallic color than, than the original gunmetal gray. So again, for dry brushing, take a dry brush. I'm going to load up. And then you want to get as much off as you can. So you should have a paper towel handy. And again, the, the trick here is to just apply dry paint residue to the miniature. And remember, you can always apply more, but you cannot. It's very hard to take this stuff away. So um, as usual, I'm going to begin on the back because this is going to be the part of the miniature that is not seen as frequently as obviously the front would be. So I just want to make sure I have a good amount of my silver on there. Really just looking to pick out the edges and the raised areas. Going pretty lightly, going against the grain. Kind of see the edges here beginning to catch this lip on the back of his neck shield. Make sure we get as well. Edge highlights here. Certainly on the gears. Again, over here on these joints, you want to catch those. I'll certainly go across his fingertips. And the gauntlets. I'm going to bring out those, those fingers there. And 
I'm gonna be going over this later on with a lighter, with an even lighter silver, because I still want to do some some kind of cool effects with that reddish tinge. Again, look at that going right over his face. See it kind of bring out those highlights in his face. Very, very little paint on this brush. Just want to make sure you're hitting all the raised areas without distorting any of the darker color that you don't want to brighten up. So sort of actually going to try to get the edges here. Actually have, have a nice effect right there, as you can see right there. And then starting to get some All right, I'm giving him a once over. He's looking pretty good. I would be able to, to just take this miniature and you know put him on the table and call him done, and that would be fine. I mean, he looks he looks good. He looks passable, but we're gonna take it to the next step. So I'm gonna just apply a little bit of a drop of water to the palette over my silver. Let's see here. Get some of that paint off. Now these plates right here, I actually am going to bring out some of that shine. Remember, your paints will dry darker than they are applied. So, just something to keep in mind. Up here. Just picking out some of the larger areas. Where light would catch. I already got his face right there. I don't want to go too, too crazy with this step. But, you know, maybe along the bicep. Bring out some of that shine. Gonna be going on a little metallic kick here over the next several over the next several episodes as we've got the young copper and the young gold dragons waiting in the wings. No pun intended. Let's hit that with a little touch. that's completely dry, that acts as like a magic eraser. So I'm actually not gonna touch that, because that just like really freaked me out. There's some of the raised portions here. Tops of the knees. 
Again, trying to be careful not to distort any of that awesome detail that we just got with the dry brushing. The lip of this, of these legs I wanna catch. And just make sure that we bring out that crease and that curve. Crazy. Curves of the sword handle. All right, I'm very happy with this the way it's shaping up. All right, I'm ready to call this finito bonito, at least for this phase. In the next step, again, we're gonna explore applying the red tint to the armor and bring out the finer details such as his eyes and things like that. We're gonna try to give like a little glowing effect with the eyes, which will be pretty neat. Um, and then kind of go from there. I'm happy with it. Again, we're gonna wait for that highlight to dry um, and see if there's anything that we need to adjust once it is dry, but I think it's looking pretty good. And we're in good shape to move on to the third and final phase of this Iron Golem project. Be sure to like, subscribe. You can follow me on Instagram at House of Paint 203. That is at house underscore of underscore paint underscore 203. And you can follow me on Facebook, House of Paint 203. Um, and my Facebook page is at House of Paint 203. No underscores. So, so many underscores. So little time. Iron Golem Part 2, we have washed them, we have highlighted them, and now we are going into the final detailing phase of this miniature project. Once again, this is Nick, House of Paint 203. Thank you for watching.